Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. Loctite, thread locker, specifically for this episode's sake, blue Loctite, aka removable non-permanent thread locker compounds, which are typically blue. We briefly tested them before when looking at torque wrench usage and found some interesting stuff. And a lot of you guys asked about doing a full video comparing these. So today we're going to be looking at that among several brands, including more affordable and even several pricier options than Loctite itself. Because torque to remove is an interesting stat, but also you're probably not using thread locker to resist solely something turning a bolt head or nut out. You're resisting loosening from vibrations high temperatures and cool downs after that temperature expansion, working in the presence of oils, and whether it's going to affect your torque wrench settings resulting in your bolt being tighter or looser than you are targeting. So we're going to do all of that to afford this topic the more comprehensive approach it likely deserves. And that's not going to include this acrylic block all that much because most thread lockers aren't made for a material pairing like this. But in our research we did find this particular YouTube short hilarious and we kept going back to it pretty sure it's supposed to be rage bait maybe as it definitely got the comment section going implying you need like gallons of thread locker to do the job right which none of these brands we bought indicate you do but was curious to see just how long it would take to cure and if there was any measurable difference in the end it is an anaerobic compound that should cure when cut off from air but surely it's got to have its limits. After filling this up here, we took shots every few hours, and at least from what we can tell visually, the left side cured in about six, seven, eight hours. The middle, with a couple more of those drops of thread locker, cured within 10 to 14 hours. And the right side, this took about three days instead of the usual 12 to 24 hours, and it's still somewhat liquidy at the bottom, even on a couple of those threads. It did result in a small bump up in each stage, but mainly from what we've learned is how shallow the thread locker penetrates into these threads, regardless of where you dab it onto the bolt, even for this really quite thin stuff. So there might be something to be said about getting some down in here onto what you're threading into with that nozzle, just not like this. <laughs> So let's get to the testing. This is Loctite 243 from the folks at Henkel who are known for this stuff. It's their highest strength medium thread locker. And that means it can be removed without ruining your day or needing a torch. And all these are versions of a 243 and perform best after a good shaking, which we first do as well. Many of them even call themselves model 243s. First thing we're going to look at is sort of like a good old fashioned how much torque it takes to remove after curing for 24 hours. But with a twist. These will get heat cycled to 225 Fahrenheit, like common engine block temps, a half hour at a time, three times brought back to room temperature, then left overnight. Well below the 300 Fahrenheit, all these advertised being within their specs, each 716 thread bolt here will get four drops of the good stuff, then finger tight, just testing the gripping power of this compound. For all of our tests you're gonna be seeing here, sure you could use more of this stuff, especially on these which have plenty of thread engagement to work with, but any that might bleed out won't be measured by us, so we're trying to keep it rather simple for comparison. Starting with the real McCoy here, the Loctite, that's 260 inch pounds on the dot. Using inch pounds here just for more resolution, but that's like 21 and a half foot pounds, 29.3 newton meters. From there, the second batch we made side by side the same way, their last heat cycle, the temperature was turned up to 295 degrees Fahrenheit and then 300 degrees for the last 10 minutes and then cooled overnight. All these advertise a working temperature range that includes 300, some of them maxing out at that temp. Here's a result of that. 176 inch pounds, a bigger drop than we expected having long used Loctite. This was rated for well over 300 degrees. Let's see how the others fare. Starting in order of price from here on out, this is Deplonic or some sorts. It's $5 for a bottle size similar to a full size Loctite bottle that are currently going for 17 bucks and this stuff is like really bad. It's terrible. Lots of torque, sure. I mean, maybe that's a good thing for you, but enough to probably ruin a few projects under the hood next time you go to remove them. It maxes out this Vampo tight range digital torque wrench, which we are using for this sort of thing for its accuracy in either the 225 or 300 degree baked batches. It's enough for you to basically max out a 12 inch ratchet as well and start to twist the entire vice jaws here. High resistance to coming loose is a good thing, but this is just gonna break stuff. Imagine this threaded into something composite on a car or even soft aluminum. We think they're probably just making batches of red permanent strength thread locker and sometimes using blue dye to sell it as the medium stuff because 
Only a torch is going to remove this, and even then, one of them took extra torch time to do so. This is getting a zero disqualified. Don't buy the cheapest stuff you can find. Who knows what they're putting inside of it. There's a reason these are bolted joints and not welded. It's supposed to be serviceable. It's not supposed to be like epoxy. If I wanted to ruin the next guy's day, I'd reach for the stuff that's colored red, not blue, just to keep my life simple. All right, stretching our budget all the way to seven bucks. Now we have a brand I'm going to call Noco. We bought this as a two pack for only $5 a piece, but as a single Model 243 blue bottle, it's $7. The 225 degree, 716 thread, 5 8 inch hex bolt takes 202.6 inch pounds to remove. We measure brake free torque, which is how brands like Loctite do these tests, but it's also good to see that climb from here. The bolted joint might be loose now, but that bolt isn't going to get a lot looser right away. And it's also seeing 173.4 for the one that saw 300 degrees. Less of a gap between the results, though both below Loctite, not shabby though. Okay, and the last of our options that cost less than Loctite, we have Esconk. Now you may not have heard of the brand, but noticed a few months ago they were number one in sales for the category on Amazon, so I bought some and have been using some since, simply because this type of viscosity dripping out on the bolt is nice. It's more like a gel than a watery mixture that Loctite usually is, so it doesn't run off and get wasted when you squirt it everywhere, though no idea if it's any good. It turns out though, through dumb luck, which is the type I'd have if any, so far looking pretty good. 292.2 inch pounds, so that's definitely the most so far. And for the higher temperature exposed example, 287.2, not even a drop off from the same batch of bolts in the oven at a higher temperature. A full 100 inch pounds up as well, and not impossible to loosen in general like the $5 stuff that was going to break our vice was. We're talking 22 foot pounds here. Nice. And now for some options that at least cost us more than Loctite when purchased, first being JB Weld. Not just JB Weld, but like their own thread locker permalock. This is about $18 for an equivalent amount of the $17 Loctite bottle. Let's see how it does. 262.7. If they were targeting Loctite's blue 243, I think they aced it there. It's the one that got hotter though. That one it's going to struggle with. 225 degrees is fine. 300. We're at 95 inch pounds now, down from 262. It says 300 degrees capable right on the packaging, but more temperature sensitive, it seems, so far. Permatex, though, you can't have a showdown like this without the auto parts store number one hero. This is the Permatex 24200. It doesn't appear to have an exact match to Loctite 243 in the range, but this is like their blue stuff. And also, what they call their blue gel. Now gel I've seen before, it drops similar to the $10 Amazon stuff we bought. This is more like paste. The application is super sweet though. You twist to push some out, then you glob it on, no fuss, no muss. But for an equivalent amount of regular Permatex, that's about 20 bucks. And you'd need a few of these 10 gram tubes of the gel stuff for about 45, so not the cheapest route either. Let's see how they do. The blue Permatex manages just 113.6 out of the gate, the lowest so far. And on the higher temp scene bolt, that's 107.6, just beating out the JB. Now for the Permtex gel, that's around twice the price per volume and, well, 131.7 and 72.6. So far, Loctite and some Amazon options are running away with things, ranking these with one point for first, but similar points for placing similarly. But we're early on in testing here. Let's see how much using these different compounds affects your target torque. Coefficient of friction, known as K-factor in bolted joints, is a hell of a thing. You might put 200 foot-pounds worth of effort in, but get 260 foot-pounds worth of turned bolt clamping as a result with an oil bolt, for example. But with Loctite, at least when it's one to two years old and not expired, it's not a lubricant, and we still hit 200 or so as we've showed last time in our video. And that remains true for blue Loctite, as does the 17% increase we saw with Permatex. Let's see which of those things are more common, the 17% or the zero. The Amazon $7 NOCO, when calibrated to the same setup, 200 foot-pounds worth of torque wrench, getting three spots of thread locker like all of these will, fresh hardware for each, gets up to 232 foot-pounds worth of tight on a 200 setting, acting a bit like a lubricator to the effect of 16% around where the Permatex sits. 
The $10 Amazon option, this being less watery and more like a gel than a water substance, has an effect you might expect. Hitting under the torque target here, instead of acting like a lubricant, it's acting the opposite, though not by much at all, about 5%. JB Weld is sort of locked into that Permatex zone here. It also gets 234, 17%. The Permatex gel paste-like stuff fares better, acting as obviously less lubricating substance, good for plus 8% here. Loctite really knocking it out of the park, I guess they are the standard for a reason, and even NASA has studied using this stuff in space. One last series of trials to overcome vibration. Rarely will your bolt or nut just be chillin', otherwise you probably wouldn't need a thread locker. We bought this drill-powered spray can shaker and made our own pipe canister to put different brands of thread locker on these same bolts and nut sets all to shake around together. Same batch of hardware from the same source, 3816 thread, which is what most brands advertise their specs using on thread lockers, and two washers sandwiched together in the same way, facing the same directions for each brand. Three examples of each, which I made die grinder dots on the head of to signify one bolt set gets finger snugged, one assembled with oil on the thread, same amount of oil for each bolt, which should be a tough ask, and one bolt set tightened to 120 inch-pounds, 10 foot-pounds. Then a series of 450 RPM DeWalt drill in forward, then reverse, and 1000 RPM M12 in forward and reverse. 10 seconds apiece, off and on five times apiece, was hoping to have some differentiating data here for you to show on screen, but essentially all brands of threaded locker snug by hand and torqued made it through this testing, though some of them are looser now than others and we'll be measuring that. For oil resistance, this is how it all broke down. Amazon $10 option and Permatex gel never cured. 24 hours later, they were both finger loose. Permatex blue, Amazon $7 option and Loctite all became loose within stage one of shaking one round of the DeWalt drill loosened them all completely free. Then they were added back into the tube for fodder for the rest of that brand's testing. And if you're still playing along at home, that leaves just one brand, only JB Weld Permalock, which was tight when we started testing, tight after stage one of the DeWalt drill, and still tight after stage two of the M12,000 RPM, and further was the only one to even need to go into torque testing here, 21.6 inch pounds, cementing it as by far the best choice to use when you're in the presence of unavoidable oil. Though it does appear Permatex also sells an oil resistant model number that might be worth a try as well. Many of these like the Loctite were supposed to be oil resistant as well. Okay, and all that's left is to find out how loose these bolts and nuts have gotten after banging around for controlled amounts of time and speed. The Loctite was pretty loose on the finger snugged 3 8 here, just 32 inch pounds, only having the thread compound to absorb all those hits. Tightened though, it fared much better. The thread locker enjoys some thread clamping pressure here and puts up more of a defense against those hits. 229.8 inch pounds, 110 over what it was originally tightened to. The $7 Amazon NOCO is not phased by that though. It puts up somehow a much higher 106.7 inch pounds on the snugged bolt and nut that got shaked around for the same amount of time. And on the tightened one, 262.3. Some of these folks seem to have figured it out. The $10 Amazon option, 122.6 now, that's even higher, doesn't even mind being shaken around a bit, and 236.2 on the torque bolt, that's pretty good stuff. The JB Weld Permalock manages to top the Loctite here for whatever reason, 50.95, 51 inch pounds, and 253.9 to remove the torqued one. This JB stuff may not like heat as much, but does pretty well everywhere else. Permatex Blue, 39.9 and 222.7. Very similar to Loctite, which is typically not a bad thing. The paste-like gel, love the container and applicator, not so much the product, don't see myself using it. 32.2, which is like whatever, and 173.4 for the lowest on the day for a torqued fastener. I mean, even the Loctite finishing last here after being jumbled around, at least in this column, make sure your bolts are torqued down when using this stuff, I guess. And here we are ready to total things, which they ranked as so. First being best in the category, and here the JB several steps ahead of the others even jumps from first to thirds and fourths here because it did several places better. Totaling all this, you get an average placing of, so lower is best, 2.67 for Loctite, 
2.67 also for this $7 Amazon option, remembering we had to throw out the $5 option we bought, like I personally threw it in the trash, so not every cheap option is gonna be great. 2.0 flat for the $10 Amazon S-Conk, 2.83 for JB, 4.0 for the Permatex, and 4.33 for the Permatex gel. Placing them like so. For once, the best selling on Amazon being for actual good reasons, it seems. And Permatex, I think they have closer match for their red stuff. Let us know if you want to see permanent Loctite tested. If you were looking for a reason to throw out your Loctite, I don't think you found it. It's standard for a reason, but that's not to say others aren't actually trying. I'm buying more of this stuff right now. Obviously, their model numbers and colors do mirror Loctite. They're sort of copying their friend's notes on that one. But the viscosity is a nice change, and overall, this type of performance is impressive. If you want dead-on torque accuracy, maybe measure bolt stretch instead, or you could just use Loctite. And if you want oil compatibility, JB Weld is an obvious standout in that regard. You can sort of pick the scenario up here and find out what might work best for you based on the data, which is always the best way to look at these results. Appreciate you joining us for this one. We make episodes every Friday. Click subscribe to be shown those sometimes, and thanks for watching.